And I'm Kristen Lagana. Welcome to Anne Arundel County Week in Review. In this week's episode, so excited. We're going to meet yes. Comfort, the police dog, and we'll preview an event for Native American History Month. But first, making headlines this week. Let's start off with a tribute to our veterans on Veterans Day. Today, we mark the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month when the First World War ended with a victory for America and Europe. Anne Arundel County will sponsor an event honoring military service members past and present tonight at Live Hotel and Casino. We'll screen our new documentary celebrating 100 years of Fort George G. Meade, and the event happens to be completely sold out. Here's a clip of the film talking about those young doe boys headed to war in 1917. This four foot long panoramic photo taken at Camp Meade in 1920 tells us so much about the period. If you look really closely, you can see the young officers who would make history together and the British and French tanks that laid the groundwork for the Shermans that were a staple of World War II. You can also study the sea of the young soldiers prepared to fight for the greatest army on earth. And actually that panoramic picture uh, was right outside my office at the post headquarters when I was in command. So I walked by it every day and I, I used to look at the faces that were there. And Patton and Eisenhower are striking and, and they stand out. It's like, yeah, there they are. But there's other figures in there. There's, there's one soldier that doesn't look like he's any older than 12 or 13 that's there. Uh, then you get the grizzled ones, and there's, there's just a, a wide assortment of faces. And I kept looking because in those panoramic pictures, um, as they shot those, the camera moved slowly across the way. And there's legends of troops on the one end racing and getting in the picture twice. Uh, and I kept looking for a face that, that showed that, and I, I never found one. Now, if you didn't get your ticket to the event, we've got you covered. We'll be sharing the film on our social media channels and Arundel TV. You'll also find bonus features such as extended interviews and a look at the families who lived here when it all began. Thank you to all of our military personnel who have served our country and continue to serve today. Are you going? Of course I'm going. going. tonight? Oh my gosh, I'm very excited. What are you gonna wear? Oh my God, I don't know. I, you, we have to talk after the show and figure out what I'm gonna wear. Probably something very similar to what I'm wearing right now. Okay, very good. But um, I'm really excited because it came out so good. Yeah. Um, we worked really hard on it. We spent a lot of time on it. We, we were, I was nitpicky and drove Cisco crazy and he did such a good job. And it's always nice when it sells out, you know, and it's gonna be a packed house. So, At um, live, I mean, that's a lot of tickets. Yeah, and it was really nice of them to, you know, I approached them um, a couple months ago and they were like, absolutely, and, you know, what can we do, and this and that, so. Um, How many is sold out, do you know? Uh, 200 tickets. 200! 200 Woo! tickets plus the VIPs. Ooh. Um, and, you know, we really want to make a nice event for, for our veterans, and it happened to be that this is the 100th anniversary of Fort Meade, so everything just comes together, I think it's gonna be a really nice night. So I'm, I'm well, pumped, congrats. I'm ready, thank and you. And many thanks to everyone who worked on the documentary and yeah. to the veterans so as well. So many people helped us out, a lot of shout outs. You know, shout outs. Christine Feldman, of course, from the libraries. We, we always have, Christine. she always helps with everything. Yes. Mary Doyle from Fort Meade, she's the PAO there. Hey Mary. Did so much legwork for this. Cisco. Um, Cisco, you know, Ken McCready, the former uh, commander of Fort Meade. What's up, Ken? Was so helpful, did so much stuff for us. Rocky Rockefeller from the college. Hey, Rocky. Our resident historian did a great job. Barbara Taylor from, I could go on Hi, and Barb. on and on. Barbara steals the show. Of Watch, course. you will see Barbara steals the show. Lovely. Well, we have some great news for all you swimmers out there, Kristen. Swimmers in November. Well, this is in, in advance of swimming time. It's an indoor pool. Very good. This week, County Executive Steve Shue announced he will make more than $1 million in improvements to the North County Aquatic Center on Crane Highway in Glen Burnie. Woohoo! The center already boasts an eight-lane, 25-yard competition pool, a 134-foot water slide, and more. Wait, I didn't know about the water slide. I know. What? Oh. Improvements will include replacing the air exchange pool packs, whatever that is, yeah renovating the water slide and other renovations. Nothing like a shiny new pool, right, so Kristen? Exciting. Yeah. Now, as we know, Kristen really knows her way around a pool, right? I do enjoy the pool. I'm a water baby. 
So I'm not big on the beach, but I love pools. Really? I'm not, I'm not I thought you were big on the beach. No, 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 no. Oh no, my no, gosh, no. I didn't know that. That pool, yeah. All so about that. So at the Lagana Cabana, was there competitive swimming, or is this just kind of lounge around There's with more a floaty? There's more synchronized dance swimming. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh my gosh, I can only or imagine. We're an all-inclusive group sport. But you weren't like, were you on the swim team in high school or anything like that? No, but we used to play colors and Marco Polo and all Marco. the fun, Polo, the fun pool games. And uh, I used to be the fastest at colors. So colors was when somebody would stand up on the pool steps with their backs turned to everyone, and you all picked a color, all the swimmers picked a color, and then um, the person on the steps would say a bunch of colors, and you'd have to make it to the other side before that person tagged you out. Okay. And that always. That game win. is called Sharks and Minnows. Oh, okay. Sharks and Minnows is uh, very, very close. Uh, yes, yes. We I was never colors. on the swim team, but I played Sharks and Minnows. See, well, go. we're going to have to go check out that water slide next summer. I'm very excited huh? about that. Let's That's cool. go. That's cool. Back in September, we launched the county's anti-racism initiative, Anne Arundel United. Since then, staff has been working to recruit and train ambassadors in the community who can help facilitate dialogue about controversial issues. Well, now we have a special event coming up where you can participate in the effort. On December 16th, a very important day because it's also my birthday. Hey, hey. shout out. Happy shout birthday, Chris out. and Lagana. Well, guess what you're doing on your birthday? Well, Anne Arundel United Ambassadors will take on the Baltimore Shuckers in a charity basketball game at Annapolis High School. Exciting. B-ball, baby. The event will feature a food and clothing drive, autographs from the Shuckers, and, of course, a lot of ballin'. Please come out and root on the United at 2 p.m. on December 16th. This is just one way that we are bringing unity in the community. Putting unity in the community. Playing basketball. Yes. You can go to aacounty.org slash united for more information. Now, this is a great... I did play basketball. Uh, so maybe you can be that on the United team. I know it's I your did. birthday. Maybe I was we can... power forward. Because you, know, you know there will be some luminaries that some friends of ours, um, Derek Matthews yes. and Mark Hartzell, our CAO. Yes. Now, my understanding is they will be coaching. Shout out to Mark Hartzell, who is a very big fan of the show. And Mark Hartzell has a jump shot. I've seen it. He does. So I heard he's coaching, but you know, whenever players become coaches, they somehow they find a way Six to actually man. get on the floor and play. Yeah. So I have a feeling Mark might, 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 we might, might see him not there. be able to resist getting in there. Now, can they beat the Shuckers? But we're, we're rooting for you guys. Go. Good luck, Anne Arundel United. United. Get it done. Get it done. It's all for a good cause. So. We're going to take a quick break, and when we return, we'll talk to Lieutenant Ryan Frazier and Comfort. Kick Comfort ah, is here to see Kristen. So excited. Take a look at our community calendar for events happening around town, and we'll be right back. Listen, I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you judge me for having a problem. No one is going to know that I need help. I need help. I know that no one is going to judge me for having a problem. I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you listen. Welcome back. Joining us this week in the studio, we're delighted to have Lieutenant Ryan Frazier and a very special guest. Everyone meet Comfort. Hi, Comfort. Kristen's been waiting for this all I'm week. I'm so excited. So excited. So and is he. I know when you have Comfort out of it. There you are. Everyone <laughs> loves to see Comfort out and about in events, and I would love to get the background on Comfort. Where'd you get him? Yeah. And um, he's, of course, a yellow so, lab. How old is he? Comfort is a two-year-old yellow lab. He'll be three at the end of this month on November 28th. And we got Comfort from an organization called Canine Campaigns for Independence, or CCI. 
They're a nonprofit organization, and they train full service dogs. So he's been in training since he's been eight weeks old. He was born at their headquarters in Santa Rosa, California. And what happens is once they're bred and, uh, and born, they get flown to the different regions throughout the United States where, uh, where their organizations are. So he was flown to Long Island, New York. And uh, once they get to New York, uh, they have puppy raisers that actually volunteer. This organization has these puppy raisers that volunteer their time. And they'll raise the puppy for the first uh, about a year. And they teach the dog the basics, socializing, uh, house training, things like that. And that's then, a job? That's actually a job, yeah. So they volunteer their we time. We need to train you in socializing. <laughs> that's be a puppy raiser. <laughs> yeah, sit. Yeah, sit. Good boy. Sit. Aw. Yeah. So tell us some examples of the events that Comfort's at and what he does. Yeah, I'm so. I'm, I'm guessing his name kind of portrays what he does. Yeah, so uh, we use Comfort for a variety of things. Um, his main goal is, to, is for community outreach. He's a community-oriented dog, so we really use him to go out into the public, into schools, and to bridge the gap between the community and the police department. And for that, he's done an excellent job. He's been very successful at that. Um, so, but that's basically what we do. We hit community meetings. We hit community events. We go to schools and do cafeteria canine uh, events. What's that? So, uh, it's where we'll just go to schools and hang out with kids. It's a great opportunity to interact with kids. And the kids love it because it's a police dog that they can interact with uh, that because they can't do that with our other dogs. So since he's he's meant to interact with people and be very friendly. Yeah, Speaking I've tried of, to interact with the. Canines. I know. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Speaking of, how does K, how does Comfort do around those pups? Yeah, Comfort's fine around other dogs. Uh, we don't associate him with our other canine dogs that are in the police department. He does nothing that's police oriented. Uh, he doesn't smell drugs. He doesn't smell bombs. Uh, his job is to get pet. So <laughs> uh, so we don't interact with our other dogs. Uh, the the trainers at CCI have a really good word that describes these uh, these skilled dogs, and that's marshmallows. So they're so submissive and they're so friendly I that like being that. around other aggressive dogs, they would just uh, take advantage of how submissive he is. Marshmallows. Mm. He's very shy. <laughs> and you have to be a, a yin or a yang as a dog for to fulfill a purpose. Sorry. Like the canine dogs, they have a specific mission, and they just have to have a different mission. Correct. Mindset. Yeah, they're very alpha. They have a specific mission. They're trained to find drugs, find people, find bombs, uh, when these dogs are bred specifically for this organization to assist people uh, that are in need. I mean, I'm, and unfortunately, we've seen this come up a bit, uh, national news where there have been events that have occurred and they've brought dogs like Comfort in right. to provide comfort. So I think that the need is definitely there. It's wonderful, all the events that you're doing. Um, now, Comfort also does some tricks. Am correct, I, correct, right? yeah. So, yeah. So he's trained as a full service dog. As he was going through his training, they didn't know who he would be paired with, whether he'd be paired with someone that had uh, mobility issues or whether it was someone with autism. So they weren't sure. Uh, once he got through his graduation, that's when he was paired as a facility dog with us. So he's trained as a full service dog. He knows over 50 commands. He can uh, turn lights on, turn lights off. He can Ooh. pick things up if you drop them. Um, he can open doors. He can close doors. So everything that he does, every command that he knows is driven for a specific purpose. So for instance, a tug. Uh, could be used to tug open a door or to tug someone's socks off or to help someone get undressed if they have mobility issues. Oh, okay. So every every you, command that he has, to me. I love yeah, watching that. Yeah, every command that he has serves a purpose. So uh, so it's very unique. Uh, it's a great tool for the police department. Again, they're a nonprofit organization. The dog was absolutely free uh, for the for the police department. So for uh, our organization, thinking outside the box for another way to relate to our community and have good community relations. It was a no-brainer for us. It's a great organization. Um, their website is cci.org. You can go on their website and you can check them out uh, to donate or to volunteer to be a puppy raiser. Or if you think that, um, that you would be a good, <laughs> or a good yeah, or if you think you'd be a good candidate for, uh, you know, for needing a service dog or know someone that needs a service dog, that's a great way to get started. And they can answer all your questions, and certainly they'll do whatever they can to help you out. It's a great, great organization. What are the rules? Like I, I always see people with service dogs, and I see people talking about the certification pro process and all this stuff. I mean, is there a real are there rules about if you can have a service dog? Yeah, it's gotten very popular. Uh, you know throughout the last couple of years, especially with when you start throwing therapy dogs in the mix there. So, but uh, there's a lot of certain laws and a lot of certain rules. So the ADA requires that states that a service dog is a dog that performs a certain service. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of such a broad statement. It could be anything. So if you have a dog that makes you feel better, that's where, you know, we start seeing a lot of the therapy dogs and stuff. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, so it's kind of tough. So 
you know, for people that really need service dogs to get around for mobility issues, people that are in wheelchairs or they need, uh, you know, these dogs to survive, it certainly makes things difficult for them if they go to a grocery store to do their shopping and they're dependent on their dog to do jobs or do a certain task and then they're distracted by another dog that shouldn't be in the store, mm. um, but someone says that they are allowed to be in the store because they're a therapy dog or whatever service that they may provide. It right. certainly, um, you know, has a drastic effect on how effective that dog can be to help the individual that needs the help. So, Got um, it. so yeah, so we, we just certainly ask that, uh, that you know, if, if people have service dogs, uh, you know, to make sure that they're treated properly. Uh, it's pretty obvious to see when there is a service dog. I mean, he's, this is what a service dog is trained to do. Yeah. So, you know, we were talking earlier and we said that the best compliment you can get when you have a service dog is for somebody to say they didn't even realize the yeah, dog was there. Yeah, they were there. So if you're in a restaurant, if you're in a store and there's a dog that's barking or eating off the floor or doing certain things, odds are it's probably not a legitimate service dog. Uh, so, again, that may be something that you want to talk with the owners. But, um, so, but yeah, that, but that's just some of the things that he can do. He's been great for the police department so far. Uh, mm. You know, we're the only police department, you know, on the East Coast that has a specific facility dog for community relations, and it's really taken off. Other departments have seen comfort on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and seen how successful it's been. So we've gone to several different police departments and done presentations for their command staff because they're interested in getting a facility dog as well and in the application process to get a dog through K-9 campaigns for independence. So it's been great. That's, That's fantastic. Great. And Good I'm getting you, dog Carl. hair all over me, and I don't even <laughs> care. I don't care. Now, can I request comfort for a special event in the community, like a, a fair, a festival, movie night at my house on a Saturday? <laughs> Good try again. Sorry. Good try. <laughs> yeah. We're certainly available. We love to come to all community events. Uh, we get very busy, and so you know we have to fit in our schedule, and we really hate to tell people no. Right. But, yeah, so we would certainly encourage people to call. They can call 410-222-8700. That's our office. And, uh, and speak to us, and we'll certainly get it on our calendar, and we'll stop out and say hi and uh, make sure everybody has a good time meeting Comfort. I love awesome. it. Well, Lieutenant, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you so much for bringing sweet, sweet comfort. And thank you for having us. What a good boy. candidates good for boy. independence. Yes, yeah. make sure you check out the website again, which is cci.org. I.org. Donate. Find out how you become a puppy raiser. And, yeah, Comfort's available if, if the calendar allows yeah. for public appearances. He's so. very busy. Ooh, <laughs> oh, bless see? you. On that note, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more Week in Review right after this. Did you hear about the pony with a sore throat? He was a little horse. <laughs> Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. <laughs> Why couldn't the pellet wait? Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because the players kept dribbling all over it. Where did cats go on vacation? New York. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. November is Native American History Month, and the library is hosting a great event to celebrate. Sarah Gannon has more. Sarah? Thanks, guys. I'm in North County Library today with Christine Feldman, and we're going to discuss some things that are coming up at the North County Library. Christine, this is great. You, this, the library looks fantastic. Um, can you tell me what is coming up at the North County Library? I understand that we're having a Native American week coming up. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. The entire month of November is Native American History Month at the library, so we have a number of events happening, including one here at the North County Library, or the Glen Burnie Library as we call it. Um, it is the Navajo Code Talkers. There's wonderful, critical, important people that helped us win the war. We're gonna have a program uh, about them from the Cryptological Museum oh, up wow. the road. And that is on the 27th at 6 p.m. at the Glen Burnie Library. Also have a wonderful program at the uh, Brooklyn Park Library. That's actually Tuesday to the 14th at 6.30. And it is about the idea of spirituality and the LGBT community okay. in Native American culture, mm -hmm. history. Uh, it should be fascinating. Very good. Um, how many patrons does the North County Library serve? Do you know? We have about 100,000 people in our service area for the Glen Burnie Library. We serve people from every corner of, of the county as well as every facet of life, and we're so uh, blessed to be able to offer things to all our citizens. Can you tell me um, if you have any things com anything coming up for the holidays, uh, like Thanksgiving? Sure. We'll have a number of story times and special events for Good. Thanksgiving and Christmas or um, any of your winter holidays. Uh, so check out our Happenings newsletter online Very or in good. the branch. Great. Um, and also, don't forget, um, 
young mothers or mothers, grandparents, they also have a fabulous program here, the Babies in Bloom and Story Time with the kids. Uh, go on the um, Anne Arundel County Public Library website. It's full of information at, and even just a, a, that a branch that's close to you. Thank you, Christine. Um, I really appreciate your time, and thanks for the services that you do for our, our, our county and our patrons. Thank you so much. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Sarah. So it looks like the library has a nice link between Native American History Month and Veterans Day as well. Oh. I've been known as a bit of a code talker myself. Yeah, you and Vicki probably got code, yeah, lots right? Of code. You do some code. Girl code. And how about Christine Feldman doing She's double awesome. duty? She's so awesome. So we had her on the show last week. Yes. We had her show this week, this week. and she helped us do the media and documentary. And I still I mean, say she needs to have her own show. She does. A novel concept. We're going to guilt her into it. Yeah. Because I mean, people want to know what the hot books are. So right. we could do a show right. regularly, 10 minute show. And she just and runs through it. It's not all. like the studio is busy already enough that we couldn't add. Wait, uh, I'm totally wrong. No, we're very busy. Totally Let me Let right me tell now. you something. You know, we're, we, we, are, we are dawning on the end of taping week and review for this week. On we, this day. Today we shot. And Kristen, too. Yes. We shot three commercials for recycling with the county executive. What's up, recycling? Thank you. Then we came right Stay back to you. the studio. We shot our first Spanish language television show. Yeah, talk to me about that. This is a show completely in Spanish. Okay. So um, Chuck and I, shout out to Chuck. Chuck is producing this show. Um, Maria like, what Cazasco. Kind of show? So it's so it's a it's sort of like Week in Review, but it's all in Spanish and it talks about. Um, uh, events that are happening in the, in the community and uh, news and events that, that affect people who speak Spanish as well as English or maybe they're just learning Span wow. English. So um, it's going to be a great show. It's a good way to communicate with people. Even if they speak English, they feel more comfortable in Spanish. So it's more, it gets more citizen involvement. That's what we're all about here. What's at the name Rebel of the show? TV. It's called Bienvenidos. Welcome. Bienvenidos. Welcome. And uh, so then we taped Week in Review. We put the final touches on the Mead, Fort Mead documentary. We had one of the so sweetest dogs ever. We had Comfort the, the Dog. He he totally slimed Kristen full of hair. Love it. You can't I see love right it. now. But, but yeah, we're doing everything here at the studio. We are we busy got at this studio. Animals right coming in, animals going out. We're doing things in different languages. It's we're crazy. Going on location other places. I mean, I know. it's legit. The only thing we're missing today is the helicopter. Oh, yeah, man, that would have been fun. Yeah. I'd like to do the helicopter one day yep. when appropriate. We need to. So thank you, Arundel TV, for all that you do for us. And thank helping, you, Arundel TV. Helping get the word out to the county. Yep. And uh, we can't wait to show you everything for the documentary yes. after the public so screening tonight. So excited to see that. So we'll see you, we'll see you at Maryland Live yeah. tonight. That wraps up this week's edition of Week in Review. You can watch this episode and archive episodes online anytime on Facebook or YouTube by simply searching for Arundel TV. Please tune in again next week for more highlights and news from around the county, and we'll see you next time.